Welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and today it is all about what I've been crafting. So if you're ready to dive in, grab your knitting beverage of choice and let's dive in. It has been one week since the last podcast and I hope you are all doing amazing. I have been knitting and crafting and I'm excited as always to share with you all what I've done. I have a brand new, actually two brand new designs off the needles to start with. So let's dive into finished objects. The first finished object is a brand new design that is going to be coming out on March 1st. And this one is called Rad with Plaid. This design is meant for the Softastic Pattern Club, which is a brand new fun pattern club available in Ravelry right now. I will link that down below for you all. This is the pattern for the month of March. I have not wet blocked them yet, so I'm just, um, they're a little scrunchy, but I just love how these turned out. They are knit out of Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. I think this one is Dill Heather. Um, I will put all the colorways down below. The white one I know is Dalmatian Heather. And I just adore Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. It is one of those yarns that I will knit with over and over again. It is durable, it's affordable. I love, love it. This, these two samples were knit double-stranded, but the sock pattern is going to be coming out with a single strand option, as well as a double-stranded. It will be graded for top-down and toe-up, and will have multiple sizes. So this one is going to be coming out March 1st. It also includes two different types of heels. You'll get the heel flap and gusset, as well as the German short row heel. I'm wanting this year to all of my sock patterns to really be jam packed with information and as much variety as possible. So having that both toe up, cuff down, multiple heels and giving you the option to really make it your own pair of socks. These are on some sock blockers that sadly they do not make anymore. I purchased them on Etsy maybe eight years ago and sadly they don't make them anymore, but they are my favorite. I'm trying to think of anything else that I want to say about these. They were knit on a US 4 with holding it double stranded. So these are red for plaid and will be coming out March 1st. Next finished project. It is one sock for my lover's knot. I will be doing two different samples for this fun pattern. And if you didn't know my lover's knot, I do have a T pattern out as well as a pullover. And I'm using that same lace cable chart into a fun pair of socks. This is going to be available in DK weight. It's a little hard to see right now. You see it a little bit here. It is a fun little cable and lace pattern. For this sample, I wanted it just on the top and I will be knitting up a second sample with having the lace and cable all along the leg as well as the foot. And that will be completed in this one. These are two exclusive colorways for the Taylor Swift collection of Ruby and Roses. And I just think that this one is going to be stunning. They're both in a DK weight, which is on her 8515. Absolutely wonderful and amazing for socks. Um, I did a heel flap and gusset with the eye partridge heel. So this one is going to have two different heels. Again, really wanting that variety, giving you more options into the patterns. Uh, will be written toe up and cuff down and will be coming out mid-March. So this brand new pattern is only gonna be coming out mid-March. And that's what I have left over of the first skein. I'm like, I want the second sample done by the next podcast. So really showing that off to you all. I love being able to show you different types of variations of pattern and ways that you can use it. I know some people sometimes don't like cable or lace on the top of their foot. It can be depending on the shoes or boots that you wear. It can be really tight and imprint on your foot. So that's why I wanted to give you two options of one of just the leg and then the second one will be all over. Giving you, again, different options for you to choose from. I knit these top down, two by two rib, fun texture, US four, and that's this pair of socks. The colorway names, I think this one's called Timeless. 
and I forget this one, I will put the names and details down below for you all. Really, really pretty. That is it for my finished objects of knitting. I just finished the last rod for plaid last night and will be wanting to cast on a new sweater for myself. Maggie of Yarnacious has dyed up a incredible, beautiful custom colorway for our membership of the Twin Stitchers community. And she had sent me a DK weight quant sweater quantity out of this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. I just caked these up and I will be knitting up a second sample of my What the Fluff pullover. This is a pullover that I have knit and have worn so much and I wanted a DK weight version. So I will put the What the Fluff pullover right here. It is a fun top down drop shoulder V-neck pullover. And I just, I've seen other people knit it in a DK weight rather than fingering held with a Surrey. And I just think it looks incredible. And it's something that I want to do. This color is, like I said, uh, from Maggie of Yarnacious and it's on her Bronto DK, which is an 8515. 8515 is definitely one of my favorite bases, which is an 85 superwash merino, 15% nylon. It really has that squishy factor and Maggie's yarn is one that I will knit with over and over again. I love and adore Maggie's yarn. I was just so honored and thrilled that she dyed this up for our membership. So here's her label, really cute. I will be doing up a second sample. I'm also doing this sample because I will be teaching at um, Hippie Strings Retreat once again this year in Jasper, Alberta. And I'm gonna be teaching my sweater course and we are going to be going over the What the Fluff pullover. I do wanna have the two samples of having that fingering in Surrey as well as a DK weight to show the different types of ways that you can work up a pattern with different weights of yarn. And that was one of my main goals and I'm really happy to have this cast on. I just wanna finish this for the month of May. It's not something that needs to be done next week, but this is one of those sweater patterns that once you have on the needles, it goes by so fast. It's one of those really fun patterns. I really enjoyed knitting it. I just, yeah, really love it. And the fit is incredible. It's so nice and airy. I just love everything about it, so. This is going to be a what the fluff pullover. That is everything that I currently have on my needles. I did finish the, the three designs that I had. I finished Eric's hat. I wanted to get things off of my needles. Now you may notice a little bit something in the background. I actually had fun creating a design wall for my quilting because I've been getting into quilting a lot lately. And it's something that I'm trying to be better at. I'm definitely not perfect. I am no expert and I can um, completely, you know, say that. But I have this little fun and I'll, I'll put in a video here of my design wall and I'm able to really have fun with putting my blocks together and all of that. So that is something new in the background and I'm so excited. Last podcast, I was able to, I received the backing fabric for my Rainbow Road quilt. This is a quilt that I debated bringing it to my quilter. She has a machine quilt that's all electric and kind of does all the quilting by itself. And I really thought about bringing it there, but then I thought, you know what, Julie, you will not get better at quilting if you don't practice. So instead, I decided to do it all myself, all of the quilting with the batting and the binding. And friends, I just finished her this morning. She is done, she is beautiful, and I am so proud of myself for tackling this. I actually just purchased a used sewing machine on Marketplace locally. It is a Janome um, memory, I will put video here, of my brand new To Me sewing machine. I think that it's absolutely incredible that you know, you can purchase things on Marketplace. I love um, purchase. I love being able to purchase something secondhand. I think it's wonderful. And this lady was just absolutely so helpful, amazing, incredible, and it was really fun. I got the sewing machine and I am so happy that I did because now 
I'm quilting, friends. It is not breaking my needles. I had a brother sewing machine and that thing was just breaking needles every single time. It was ridiculous. All right, enough of the babbling. Now you wanna see the quilt. I am in love. I decided to go with a fun red backing for the quilt and then the binding. This is a quilt kit from Connecting Threads and also the backing is Connecting Threads. I will put the link to this exact color that I used for the backing, but all of the front and the binding comes with the quilt kit. Isn't she pretty? If you're curious about this fun journey, I actually have a YouTube video on knitting, or not knitting, quilting this um, quilt top in four days. So if you wanna go and check out that fun vlog, that is now on YouTube. So she is pretty and she is done. And I am getting better at my corners. It is not perfect. This is only the second quilt I've found because the other one was just, she was breaking needles. She, 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 she was, she tried, okay? She tried, but she, she, it didn't work out. I am in love with this quilt. Even Eric, my husband, is in love with it. He, um, we're just both so happy with this quilt. I am so excited to have this done, to have it all curled up. I do need somewhere to display my quilts. Um, I'm thinking of putting it right here. I have this really fun kind of ladder uh, and putting these beautiful, beautiful quilts. I'm not sure the next quilt I am going to do. I do want to finish my ghost quilt. I also received and I showed off last week a beautiful flannel kit from Connecting Threads, which is very seasonal here. It is so cold. This morning we woke up to minus 21 and I just kept thinking, how nice would it be to have a flannel quilt? So what do you all think? I think I should sew and start that flannel quilt. So let me know below, comment flannel quilt, Julie. You gotta get started. And let me know if you want a fun vlog about that as well, like I did with my Rainbow Road. I really love bringing you along the journey and getting better at sewing, getting better at quilting. Again, I am not perfect, but I'm, bettering myself at a craft. When we all started knitting, nobody was perfect. And, you know, it took years and years before I really understood certain things about my knitting. And I feel that way about sewing and quilting. So if you also have any recommendations on tutorials and videos and blogs or YouTube channels, please put them below. I would appreciate all of your support and help through this amazing, amazing journey that I'm going through. For my acquisitions, I did receive something in the mail from Maggie of Yarnaceous. She has these incredible book boxes, which is a bi-monthly club where you receive everything in themed of a book. And as you read the book, you will be opening up certain packages by chapter or by page. And I'm really excited about this. So let me grab that box. The February book box is for the book Butcher and Blackbird. And this is how it shipped while that is hitting my head. This is how it shipped. So each, every single chapter pages. So this one will say page 22, you open that. And it comes with tons. Tons of fun things. So I cannot wait to start this book. I'm going to be grabbing it on my Kindle and getting a copy. And I will not, I will not be opening it up ahead of time. I do want the full experience of this and I'm just really, really excited. So thank you, Maggie, for sending this my way. I will put her link below. She is doing this fun book club box every two months. So you get stuff that's inspired by the book. You'll get some yarns, some goodies, everything. Um, for that, so I'm really, really excited. And I may be designing a pattern for this in, in, in the future, who knows? That is everything that I received in the mail that I have been knitting and quilting. Reading, I have started the third book in Crescent City. And I do have to say that I am not as much of a fan of the third book, the, yeah. 
Without giving anything away, I do find that the third book is more like a plateau where it's not as interesting. I find it a bit repetitive. I don't know, I kind of stalled halfway through the third book. I'm not really sure why. I'm curious to know from you guys if you've read that series, how you feel about the third book. But I'm just not as into it as I was for the first and second. I feel like I'm losing steam on it. So I'm rereading Fourth Way. <laughs> I think I've read this book like seven times now. It's just, I find Fourth Wing, the way that it's written, it gotcha, it gets you from the get-go. It is a type of book that entices you, that has, you know, action, that has kind of a little bit of a suspense because you're not really sure what's going to happen. You have a love, romance. It, it, it embodies everything with fantasy. And I do find that the writing of Sarah J. Mass, it is very good, but I do find her books, the two series that I've started, starts off very slow. You almost have to force yourself to get through the first half of her books to get to the good stuff where you're actually interested and invested in the characters. I did find that with her A Court of Thorns and Roses or Akatar and also her Crescent City. Those two first books, the first half, you're struggling. Like you're, you're trying to get into it. So I do find a little bit, but I do find that fourth wing from the get go, I was, I was hooked. I needed to know. And I've just been loving rereading it, listening to an audiobook. Um, just, yeah. Let me know below. Do you like, which one do you like best? Audiobooks, Kindle, or the physical book version? I'm curious to know. I am all three. Honestly, I love listening to an audiobook while I'm working, while I am cleaning or just knitting, but then I also love having the physical books. Um, there's something so special about holding a real book and having those on your shelf for those special books. It's something, I don't know, I love the tangible book. And then Kindle, I think that it's amazing. So when I go to the gym or when I want to read before bed or if we're going somewhere, there's so much you can have on a little tiny device, which is amazing. So I'm curious to know from you guys, which one do you guys wanna see? That's everything that I have to share this week. I hope you all have a wonderful and fantastic week ahead of you. And I will catch you guys again next time. Don't miss out because Saturdays I upload a fun bonus video and you never know what's coming at you this Saturday. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below this video. Happy knitting and sewing, friends. Until next time.